Hello and welcome to the Manifestation Podcast with Peggy McCall. Peggy is a world-renowned wealth, business, and manifestation expert, as well as the best-selling author of the brand new book, The Demand Principle. Are you ready to manifest your dreams? Tune in now. Hi there, it's Peggy McCall. Welcome back to the Manifestation Podcast. This podcast is designed to help you manifest your every desire. Today, we're going to be working from my book, the 18th book called The Demand Principle, chapter number seven. Chapter number seven is called See It Done Continuously. Well, why would you want to see it done continuously? And Peggy, what does it mean? Well, it is referring to your biggest demand. What is it that you would absolutely love to be experiencing in your life What is your greatest, your grandest, your biggest goal that you have for yourself? What is that goal? What would you absolutely love? What I suggest that you do for the purpose of listening to this podcast is to think about one goal that you would absolutely love to have manifest in your life. Now, I like to call these goals demands. Why demands? Because demand means it's an insistent and peremptory request as if made by right. What does that mean? It means that you assume that whatever you desire or demand is already yours. And I'm gonna tell you something, that is the secret to manifesting anything and everything in your life. There's a fabulous book written by Neville Goddard called Feeling is the Secret. And the answer is in that title, Feeling is the secret. However, what happens for many people is they're not accustomed to feeling as if their demands are already there in their life. So what you have to do is really reprogram yourself and develop new habits that continuously puts you into the feeling state of already having everything that you desire. At the moment, At this time that I'm recording this for you, I am sitting in a cabin that my husband and I built on a property that we had bought a number of years ago. You see, I manifested this. I had made a decision. I demanded that I and my husband would own a beautiful waterfront property. And not just any property, this property was special. It was special in my mind. I saw it as vividly real as I teach in the book, The Demand Principle. And in chapter seven, See It Done Continuously, I share a little bit about the story of how I manifested this waterfront property and this waterfront cottage into our lives. So how it began was the following. I decided I would love that. I would love to have a beautiful waterfront cottage for me, my husband, and to share with our family and with our friends. But at the time that I got the idea and conceived of the idea, my husband wasn't really keen on the idea. And in Denny's mind, he was thinking, why would we want two places? Why would we want to have to cut two grass? Why would we have to maintain two places? And so in his own mind, he was thinking it was going to be a lot of work. So I helped him understand that it's going to be fun and enjoyable having the two places and help him understand the big benefit and that we could hire people to do the maintenance, to cut the grass, to do these things. Well, that got him a little more excited, so he decided he was on board with the idea as well. So what I did was, with Denny, we sat down and we made a list of the criteria of what we would love at the waterfront property. You see, that's an important part in manifesting, that when you're manifesting, that you get very clear on what you would love. So with with our list, Denny and I sat down and we made a list that we were looking for a cottage that was relatively close to our home. So within an hour drive, approximately, that the property was a nice, relatively flat lot. In other words, no steep climbs or big, you know, big steep cliffs going down to the waterfront, that it was a nice, relatively flat property, that the property had a beautiful view of the water and if it could be surrounded by water and have a nice big waterfront, several hundred feet of waterfront, 
that was ideal. We're also looking for a place that had a gorgeous sunset where the sun would set exactly in front of the cottage, that we had plenty of space and room for everyone, that we also had privacy so that if we're playing our music or we're having friends over, that it wouldn't be bothering anyone, any neighbor. So we became very clear on all the things that we would love to have in our property. So what I did initially after setting those objectives is I declared and demanded that we owned this property. And then I began to visualize. And what did I do? I saw us waking up in the morning and just turning our head in the bedroom and looking out the window and seeing water. I imagined that we would be barbecuing on our deck and having friends and having outdoor meals and I could smell the barbecue. I would imagine having campfires outside and roasting marshmallows on the campfire with my grandson. I imagined all of these things. I imagined the whole experience. I imagined and hearing the loons at night as they love singing their songs and, and just looking at the sunset as well. So I became fully embraced in these visions, in these visualization exercises, so that I really impressed these feelings into my subconscious mind so it felt very natural. So one day, I had heard about a property that was for sale by owner. And it wasn't this one. It was one actually down the street. So my husband and I drove over. And because we drove over to check out this other property, we saw a sign in front of this place that said for sale by owner. So we inquired. And when we inquired, we discovered that the seller had a price tag that seemed a little bit high in our opinion for the property and the value. But nonetheless, I didn't allow that to hold us back. In my husband's mind, it's like, we're not buying that place. The guy's price is ridiculous. But I didn't allow that to stop me. What I did though, was I asked the seller if he would mind if I walked over to the property and sat in one of his lounge chairs that was by the water and that I, I could visualize. And he said, sure. I mean, he probably thought I was a little kooky at the time, but he agreed that I could do it. Now I did it once, once. Now the value of doing that is that I did it once physically, but by actually being on the property, the property that we decided that we would purchase and own by doing it right here on the property, it allowed it to anchor in even more. So I sat there and I looked around and I really took it in. Like I took in what I would see. I took in the view. I looked over to the left. I looked straight. I looked right. I looked behind. And I really got a really good picture of what it would look like. So that following that day, and because I write in chapter seven in the demand principle about seeing it done continuously, after that point, I had an even better image and a better vision in my mind that could really solidify the feeling into my heart, into my soul, knowing that this property was already ours. And then one day, my husband and I were having a conversation and we're talking about price at this point. So we had both decided that we would love to purchase this place. And so we started to discuss price. And while we were discussing price, we determined that the price that we were willing to pay was significantly lower than what the seller was offering it for. But we really strongly believed that his price was too high. And so my husband went out fishing one day and I walked over to talk to the owner. It was a for sale by owner. And we started to have a dialogue and we're standing on the deck right beside the water. And I said to him, I said, you know, we're very, very serious about your property, but we feel that the price is just too high. And he said, well, what would you be prepared to pay for it? And I gave him a price that was actually lower than what we were prepared to pay because I had a feeling we we're going to get into a negotiation and perhaps meet at the price that we were willing to pay. And as it turned out, that is precisely what happened. We had a verbal agreement. My husband was happy. I was happy. And we closed on this property and we purchased it. Now, the process of manifesting this into physical form, if we go back in time, when I first decided that I would love to have a waterfront home, my husband was not on board. 
but I didn't let that stop me. At the time that we decided to purchase the waterfront home, we didn't have the cash to purchase the waterfront home, but I didn't let that stop me. When we finally found a waterfront property and a waterfront home that we would love to purchase, it was in serious need of renovation. We weren't looking for a project, but I didn't let that stop me. And at the time that we found this particular property, it had a price tag that was significantly higher than what it was really worth, what the value was, but I didn't let that stop me. And what I want you to really think about is don't let some of the facts stop you from manifesting whatever it is that you desire. What I know to be true is the following. When you set your heart, now I'm talking about heart, not mind. There's a term called set your mind on something. Yes, you can set your mind on something for sure. Hold it with your will. Hold that idea in your mind, in your consciousness. But when you set it in your heart, meaning you feel it, you feel it as if it's already here right now, as if whatever it is that you desire is done, that you have it, that you own it, that you've accomplished it, that you've manifested it, whatever it is, then you will absolutely manifest that into physical form. It works every time, every time, not some of the time, it works every time. Now, I have been manifesting for many, many years because I learned how to effectively manifest. But what I want you to also know is this is not complicated. It's relatively simple. But you've got to discipline yourself that you're doing certain things every single day, not once in a while, but every single day that puts you in perfect alignment, meaning you feel as if your desire, your demand is already there in your life right now. So what do I suggest that you do with this? What I suggest that you do is, number one, make sure that you get your copy of the demand principle. It's available on all of the Amazon sites and study it, read it, and apply what I'm teaching you. That's really important. And then set a demand. Set a demand that you would absolutely love. Set a demand that scares you and excites you at the same time. Because what's going to happen for you is you as an individual, you're going to grow. You're going to expand. You're going to get better and better at manifesting. And of course, you're going to manifest your desire as well. There's so many benefits to really learning and applying what I'm teaching you in the demand principle but you've got to do the work, but it's fun work. This is not hard work, but get into the habit of doing these things over and over again. Really focus. So choose your demand. Choose that demand that you would absolutely love to have in your life. Choose it. Choose it right now. Don't leave this podcast without deciding. Here's something that I would absolutely love to have. Okay, now that you have that, then imagine, just take a moment right now, and imagine that you have it in your life right now. What are you feeling? Are you feeling joy? Are you feeling relaxed? Are you feeling relief? Are you feeling grateful? What are the emotions that you're feeling? And then what are you seeing? As a result of you manifesting that demand into physical form, what do you actually see in this moment? What are you seeing? What are you touching? What are you hearing? What are you feeling in your heart? Get connected to those states and see it done continuously. See it over and over and over and over and over again. And I guarantee you, it will manifest into form. All right? So I'm going to recommend that you follow through today. I know for certain, from personal experience, you are going to be glad that you did. I'm certainly glad that I have learned these techniques and apply them in my life. I also want to ask you, if you love these manifestation podcasts, please leave us with a five-star review and share it. Share it with people that you care about it. Share it with people that you love. Help them manifest their every desire into physical form as well. 
So get on with the manifesting, get your copy of the demand principle and put it into practice today. Thanks for tuning in to the Manifestation Podcast with Peggy McCall. Take your learning deeper by signing up for the free morning manifestation videos at morningmanifestation.com and follow Peggy on all social media channels for daily updates. See you again. To get my latest book, The Demand Principle, and to obtain all of the special bonus gifts, you can go right now to the Demand Principle. Dot com. Again, that URL is thedemandprinciple.com.